wow, we've got a good looking group to start a worship service today. Quick quiz. If you if you're comfortable, stick your hand up. Comfortable. Temperature. Okay. Comfortable. Comfortable with the temperature. If you're hot, stick your hand up. If you're cool, stick your hand up. I didn't even raise my hand that time. Oh, yeah. What's the deal? Hey, the point I'm making. The point is you can't please everybody. You can't please everybody. Uh, There's more comfortable than not. So grab your fan if you're hot. Grab your blanket. We try to get as close as possible to being comfortable. In Sunday school today, we had 24 of them. And uh, our Sunday school offering was $710. And our sweet ladies in the women's number two class over the women's class had 100%. Woo. I was teasing Miss Carolyn when she told me that. She did a little like this, you know. <laughs> and the class screen, I step over here, tell me again how you did that. I think she might have been a cheerleader at one time. So we need to hit 110% now, or 115. But we're, we're proud of that class. Uh, birthdays, Tommy Aiken was last week. And I've told you before, I'm in favor of firing the guy that does the book. He missed it. We need somebody else to take, take over that job. If you want to do it, please let me know. But Tommy Aiken was last week, and so if you should talk to him or text him or anything, wish him a happy birthday. I know a lot of you did. That's where I saw it. On, uh, somebody told me it, it, it's about Tommy's birthday. I said, I didn't have Tommy's birthday then. And I looked, and it was. I stopped one line. I do have a story on it. One more, one more question. Uh, did anyone else have a birthday? Didn't have any more. Or any anniversaries? Didn't have any anniversaries. Okay. Now, I have a quick story. I thought it was right good. This is a true story. It's all close to uh, We all remember the 9 11 when the planes were taken over and one of the Pentagon. And this is something that happened in the Pentagon right after that uh, plane hit. It was a daycare facility that had a lot of children in it. The people in the Pentagon could bring their children into the daycare to care. And there was a uh, bunch of children in there. And all of a sudden, they heard the explosion, and there, there was just a few daycare workers to take care of. And they, they needed to get them out of the building because they weren't sure where the whole building was going to go down or what. And they were in a panic over what they could do. There were many children, uh, most of them were toddlers, but there were some infants that had to be taken out with the cribs. And there wasn't time to get them all bundled up into their carriers and strollers. And a young Marine came running into the center and asked, what do you need? And the director said, we need to get these children out of here. And he ran out, and she kept waiting and waiting, and she thought, well, he's gone. And about two minutes later, though, he came back with 40 other Marines. And each of them grabbed a crib with a child, and the rest started giving up toddlers. So one, one trip, two toddlers in the arm or a crib, they got them all out uh, very quickly, and they, uh, they got them out in an area, <coughs> excuse me, uh, down toward the park near the baton. And uh, they, got, they carried them almost three quarters of a mile from the building for safety. They stopped in the park, and they formed a circle with the cribs. And all of the soldiers, uh, Marines, were standing around it at, the, at the junctions up there. And they had the children inside, so they couldn't wander off in time. Uh, they remained on guard for the children until the parents came and got the children. The chaplain was talking about this. Said, None of this I, I ever saw or heard in any of the news stories of the day. But it was really a miracle that they did that. Uh, it was an incredible story of that service being that day. The thought of those Marines <coughs> and what they did and how fast they reacted uh, was really great. But how to respect any lesson is one of the most touching stories from the Pentagon that day. It's the military, not the politicians, 
and ensure our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's the military who always salutes the flag, who stares beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag. Uh, if you care to offer the smallest token of recognition and appreciation for the military, please pray for our men and women who have served and are currently serving our country, and pray for the families who have given the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. Remember what you do, not what you say you'll do determines who you really are. I look at a story. I've never, I, I never heard of that until I ran across it. I've got copies of the like to turn over this thing. Let's all stand and turn to him number 143. You're my all in all. Be glad to take one. I'll even come to your house if you, okay. if you want that. Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon, he lost 
both of the legs, and I think they've taken them both off above the knee, so, uh, and he's also a cancer patient, he has leukemia, so be much in prayer for both of them, lift him up in prayer as he's still on drive the road. Okay, so, uh, are they talking about rehabilitation for him, so be mindful of that. Also, uh, Bonnie, Hunter, Scott, I believe for the uh passed away. This is the daughter of former pastor here, George Hunter. And so live live up her funeral will be at hall sometimes later this week, so be uh, mindful of that. Any other thing uh, that we need to remember? Just, just recently two of my uncles both died from heart attack. One died uh, right after getting out of the hospital, and five days later, another one died. We, for Uncle Jimmy, we had a funeral plan, but uh, Uncle Jimmy said he didn't want that. So, uh, if not already happened, he said he wanted to. He said he wanted his body to be burned. So, creepy. Okay. I have a, a friend that's going to have surgery Friday. On her knees, and she's also in Fort so I pray that she comes through and that we can continue to read that. I'm curious. Go ahead, Joe. I didn't catch the name. Oh, Ann McKinney. Spell the last one. M C K I N N E Y. Okay. Here's Uncle Rod Tillman, probably one of my kids that day today. Her mother and brother. Thursday, Lily Carmack is in the nurse. And Saturday, she graduates Union University. Congratulations, but I gotta go pick my daughter up in Nashville. I mean, we just dropped her off. Just dropped her off kindergarten the other day. I just over into the dog warm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time you're getting old. <laughs> What's Roger's last name? Tillman. Roger Tillman. Tillman. I have a first cousin whose husband died Saturday morning. His name is Jerry Hensley. H E N S L Y. No, we've heard a lot of prayer needs this morning. I want you to listen to them very closely. And we wonder what's next. But God's still in control, folks. Amen. God's still watching over every member of our immediate families, our families, our friends, our neighbors. God's still great. Yes, ma'am. Bill Jones passed away. That's my brother-in-law's son. Okay. So remember that, Bill Jones. Okay. But let's just praise the Lord. But he walks beside us, he walks with us, he takes care of us. We're safely in his arms. He is the great I am. There is no situation in your life that God is I am today, tomorrow, and the rest of our lives. We give him praise, honor, and glory today. Let's bow together as we pray together. Lord, we thank you that we can share these needs together. Father, you are well aware of each one of them. But Father, you're the gracious, great God that we serve. And Father, you're there for us. And I pray, Father, that you continue to watch over and walk with us through the tragedies that we go through, as well as through the joys of life that we share together. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Father, for your grace upon us. And bless us as we worship you this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sandy. Number 328, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. <coughs>
Number 223, Nothing But the Blood. 223.
going to read the scripture at the top while we stand. We're going to sit on 407 and we'll stand up and we'll read the scripture reference at the top of 407 and then we'll sing hymn number 399. So hymn number 407.
Beginning in verse 20, I want to read down to verse 29. <clears throat> now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, they are eating the Passover meal. I took my eyes off of where I was reading and lost my place. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall be free. Get this scene in your mind right now, that Jesus and his disciples seated around this table, are reclining around this table, and he looks at them and says, one of you will be traded. What if Jesus were standing here today and said the same thing to us? One of you will be traded. And I think what we would say is, oh no, not me, Lord. I'll not do that. But there was one in the crowd who was going to betray Jesus. He'd already made the deal. And Jesus, as he goes on, said in another one of the other Gospels, says, he that dips the salt with me, that is, the dish, will be the one that betrays me. And what I, what I find hard to believe, in all reading all the Gospel accounts, as the disciples are asking, Lord, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? None of them caught what Jesus said, and none of them realized that Judas was the one at this point in time. Because they were focused on themselves. They were focused on, Lord, is it I? Can I do this? They were not watching the total scene that was going on. The next verse said, and they were exceedingly sorrowful. And every one of them began to ask, Lord, is it I? And they answered and said unto them, He that dimmeth his hand with me in the dish, the same will betray me. They didn't notice that. The Son of Man goeth that is written of him, but woe unto him, unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for him that if he'd never been born. Let me ask you a question. Was Judas saved? According to this, this very passage here, no. But then why did Jesus choose him? Because it was in the plan of Almighty God that what was happening to the Lord Jesus Christ was for our benefit. He was dying for us. Amen. And giving his life for us. Then Judas, which, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Just as you said. Basically what the Greek reads, Just as you have said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. Now, at this point, Judas leaves. Judas was present for the Passover, but not for the Lord's Supper. Now, let me back up just a little bit. They're in the upper room, and the first thing Jesus does in the upper room is to wash his disciples' feet. He washed Judas' feet. Here is the Master, the Lord of glory, condescending to a point of serving others. And folks, we need to serve others. We will serve others others in a few moments as we observe the Lord's Supper. You will pass the bread. You will pass the cup. And, and all of us are essential to that passing. Do you hear me? In other words, if on this row where Brother Morris is, if, if any one of those decides not to pass the cup, the others don't get served. And therefore, there are people who are not getting served because we're not doing the serving role. And God wants us to do that. And so as they're eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood 
of the New Testament, the New Covenant, which is shed for the many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus, on many occasions, taught in parables. He used illustrations. Jesus was a powerful communicator of the truth that he wanted us to understand. And Jesus is basically telling us and reacting out this sermon for us. There are four lessons in this passage of Scripture I want us to see today. But he's acting it out, instructing us to reenact it as oft as we do it. And remember what he has done for us. Four lessons, four truths I want us to see. First of all, it is a sermon concerning faith. Jesus took the bread and the cup and shared it with his disciples. And in so doing, he was illustrating the price that was necessary to redeem us from sin. Every person in this building today, you're, you fell victim to sin in your life. And because you fell victim to sin, you became condemned before Almighty God. Sin brings death. But praise the Lord, He died for us and redeemed us from death that we might have eternal life in Him. What faith that took. What faith it took to believe that God would leave heaven to come to this earth. What faith it took to see that Jesus would die for sinners such as you and I. But faith that is. But when faith is expressed in Jesus Christ, then and there a transformation takes place in your life. You're saved by the grace of God. It's all right. Say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that we are saved by His grace. His life is poured out for us that the life that was lost to sin might be recovered through His redemption. The Lord's Supper reminds us of that faith. I read the story <clears throat> of a little girl that was wounded, lost quite a bit of blood. And her brother had the same blood type that she did, so they, they told the brother, you need to give your blood for your sister. So they took him into the room where the sister was lying, and they inserted a tube into his arm and then a tube into her arm to go about the transfusion. While the little boy is laying there, he looks up at the nurse and he says, how long would it take? And, and she puzzled, looks at what do you mean how long would it take? He said, well, how long would it take for me to die? Oh, what loss of love that is. That he was willing to give his life for his sister. But how awesome it is that Jesus Christ was willing to die for our sins. And redeem us by his precious blood at Calvary. This sermon also is a sermon concerning fellowship which I have already alluded to. Jesus says to, in this passage, if you were looked at in verse 26 and 27... He broke the bread, he took the cup, he gave to them and said, give it to each other. You know, I don't know exactly the, the scene that is unfolded here, but in that day and time, you know, we are sophisticated folks today. We eat on the run many times, but we eat at a table with a chair. Right? In that day and time, they were reclined. They were reclining on their left arm and taking the food from the table, around the table. And so, whoever was partaking of it would have to pass it to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until it got all the way around the table. It is true for us today that as we receive this symbolic meal, 
that the aid of our fellow believers is important in that. How desperately we need to remember this lesson. That we as Christians are about serving each other. Service. Folks, listen, there are no, there are no chief dogs in our church. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not number one way up here and everybody else down here. We are all equal at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If there is a hero today, it is Jesus Christ, our Savior Lord, who died for us. Amen. But Jesus, in order to illustrate this servanthood, is the one who took the bowl, girded his loins, and washed their feet. It was customary in that day and time, there was always a servant. When you entered somebody's house, that would help take off your sandals and Wash your dirty feet. Why were the feet dirty? They didn't have any pavement to walk on. They were dirt roads. And so the dirt was on their feet and somebody had to wash their feet. You had to come into the house and be clean. Folks, to enter heaven, we have to be clean. And Jesus illustrates the servanthood that he was willing to die for us that we might receive His cleansing in our life. Amen? Amen. You and I are part of the body of Christ. Some of the parts of the body are more important than others. Let me illustrate. How many of you thought about your big toe this morning? <laughs> Sam Mars probably did. But we don't think the big toe is very important until you get up in the middle of the night and kick it on the bedpost. <laughs> <coughs> and then your big toe becomes very important to you. And if you kick it on the bedpost, you're probably going to lay out a yell and let everybody else in the house know, I kicked my big toe. Every part of your body is important to your body. That's true. Amen. <laughs> Every part of the body of Christ is important. And we need to remember that lesson that he gives to us. But this is also a lesson about forgiveness. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for our sins. And the juice that they took was a symbol of his sacrifice. At the moment that the disciples are partaking of the Lord's Supper, they do not realize the enormity of what Jesus is telling them because Jesus has not gone to the cross yet. But on that next day, 9 a.m. in the morning, Jesus Christ is nailed to an old rugged cross. And there he hangs for six hours, giving his life's blood for us every drop. And I think in the days that are to come, they begin to understand Jesus gave himself for me, for my sin, and what was wrong in my life, and all that I do. But I want you to notice something else about this. Jesus' life was given that you might be forgiven. Did you catch what I said? He gave his life that we might be forgiven. Amen. His blood was shed that we might be saved. Amen. The Lord's Supper reminds us that we are a forgiven people. Praise the Lord. Amen. But don't you notice something else? Go down with me in verse 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until that day. That's where the title of my sermon comes from. Until that day when I drink it with you, with you in God's kingdom. Folks, there's a day coming when all the redeemed of all the ages are going to sit down at the Lord's Supper in heaven with God. All the redeemed of all the ages. 
songwriter said this, I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing in the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Someday. And until that day, God wants us to do that. When I was growing up, we, my dad sang with a group in the church. My dad had, had a tenor voice. I didn't get it. But there was a hymn, and I don't know the title of this. I don't know who wrote it. Why don't you listen to it? It says, I am a stranger here within a foreign land. My home is far away upon the golden strand. Ambassador to be of realms beyond the sea. I'm here on business for my king. Folks, we're here on business for him. God wants us to reenact this story again and again in life. So as we come to the Lord's Supper, perhaps we can look at these parts. Every part is critical, so we... As we receive the Lord's Supper today, I want you to do this. Do not take it lightly. Don't take it well. That's just something we do every fifth Sunday. It's a very important part of worship that we have to Almighty God. Recommit your heart, your life, your service to the one who loved you and redeemed you by the death of his son in Calvary. All Christians here today are invited to partake of the Lord's Day Supper. And in so doing, you're reminded of your faith, the fellowship that we share together, the forgiveness of Almighty God in our life, and the fact that one day, one day we'll sit down at the Lord's table in heaven and partake of it as all the redeemed of the Lord. I read a story about a man who committed murder. He was sentenced to life. After a period of time of serving his sentence, he was allowed to leave the prison and work for a farmer in Nashville, Tennessee. Sometime after that, the farmer got a letter from the state prison system saying that the man's sentence had been suspended. The farmer never told the man that his sentence had been suspended. And for ten more years he worked for that farmer until that farmer died. And then someone found the letter and went to the prisoner and said, you've worked ten years for this man and your sentence had already been pardoned. Folks, we've received a divine holy pardon. So don't serve the devil anymore. You live, you are a stranger in this land, but your citizenship is in heaven. You've received a divine pardon from Almighty God. So give Him praise and honor and glory today. Now with me together as we pray for Lord, I thank you that as we reenact the Lord's Supper, that, Father, you might remind us so very much of the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was willing to leave heaven's glory, come to this earth, go to Calvary in our place, Father, what faith that takes for us to receive that into our own hearts. Father, remind us of the fellowship that we share together. That, Father, as we serve each other, we will love each other and serve each other in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, remind us that we are forgiven. That by your blood we are redeemed. And, Father, that we have an eternal home in heaven awaiting us. And, Father, we thank you for that day that we shall sit down at your table in heaven and rejoice together in your presence. Thank you, Lord.
for saving us by your grace. In Christ's name we pray. May I ask Sandy to come and lead us in a hymn. sacrifice of blood that we're going to live a different life. Are we fulfilling the covenant? That's a good question for us to ask. Am I, am I, if, if Jesus were to come today, would he say everything is satisfactory to me? Or would he say, but? That's what we recommit our life. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that we should not take of it unworthily. And I've thought many times as I've read the passage of Scripture, I'm never worthy for what Jesus does for me. But that's not what it's saying. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, I become worthy in Him. Is my focus on what Jesus has done for me. God wants us to give Him praise and honor and glory. Let's bow together as we pray together. But Jill Carmack, would you give us this? Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. We pray you that we can come this day and we will honor you. This time, that you can give us our any sins and help us love one another. In the name Jesus took the bread. 
which was unleavened bread. In other words, there was no sin in it. Leaven represents sin in Scripture. Almost completely. So Jesus offered a sinless sacrifice for us in Calvary. And he took the bread and he blessed it. And then he broke it and gave to me. Let's do likewise. But gave me Julius and Perkins. Jesus break the bread, which represents his body, which is broken for us. Folks, you do not understand the suffering that Christ did for you. And he loved us that much. And then he gave to them, he said, take it in. Ask the deacons to stand, please. children here today. In the Old Testament, when they crossed the Jordan River, they took stones out of the river and set up an altar before Jericho. 
And Joshua told the children of Israel, said, you use these stones to teach your children. Folks, the, the, this is a stone that we need to teach our children. What does it mean? To remind them of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of him. Amen. On that night, there were several cups on the table. Pass over me. The third cup represented the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Folks, we all always wake up every morning saying, Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Go to bed every night saying, Thank you, Lord, for saving me. His forgiveness <coughs> is eternal and complete. When Jesus had given a blessing, he gave it to them. Let's bow together as we pray. Lord, I thank you that you loved us so much. That you gave your life at Calvary for us. That you shed your very precious blood to redeem us. And for that we give you praise and thanksgiving. In the sweet name of Jesus we pray.
disciples were having a party that night or not, or whether they were silent like we are. I want you to do something for me right now. I want you to turn to the person on your right and your left, if you have a person on your right and left, and tell them, I love you, Jesus. Now, do you love Jesus? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, this is my blood which is given to you, this do, in remembrance of me. says in one of the Gospels, they sing a hymn and then went out. So we're going to sing a hymn. Whether you go out or not is up to you. <laughs> if Sandy's going to stand and lead us, let's stand together. Let's be the tie. Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. That sounds like a good one. I think that's Miss Betty's favorite. Let's stand together as we sing Victory in Jesus.